Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. <laughs> what a fight that was last night between Teofimo Lopez and George Cambosis Jr. And we now have a unified or, I guess, undisputed lightweight world champion. And, wow, it was just... Uh, I don't even know where to start, so I guess... <laughs> Going into that first round, you know, both guys came out into the ring looking like they were going to war, and that's exactly what you want. And we obviously saw Tia Fimo going full out. He was looking for that knockout in that first round, it was clear. And uh, Cambosis Jr., you, you did look a little bit panicky, and you, you just didn't know what was going to happen. And of course, uh, and right at the end of the round, Cambosis Jr. gets him with the overhand right and tremendous shot. And told, I think it was more of a flash knockdown. He did hit him cleanly, but I don't think it really hurt him too badly. And then when they went back to the corners, hearing Teofimo Lopez's dad saying, Oh, you're off balance. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it, I quite like listening to that corner compared to Cambosis Jr.'s. Um, it's just very different. <laughs> but yeah, going into that fight, I think probably the inactivity of Lopez did not help. Um, going into this fight, I watched the Lee Selby fight the night before and I was not convinced Cambosis Jr. would win this fight, I have to admit. Um, just from watching that fight alone. I think he obviously looked good in that fight at certain moments, but he just got hit far too often. And Lee Selby, you know, you know, he's not the biggest puncher in the world. And Teofimo Lopez looked absolutely huge last night. And yeah, I think Cambosis Jr., you know, seemed to, you know, you know, he's a he's more of a natural lightweight, I guess, compared to Lopez. I think um, you could maybe tell, you know, as the rounds went on, Lopez was starting to tire. He came out okay in that second round. He started attacking the body, was a bit more calmer, and he looked better. And I think um, in the exchanges, you know, Cambosis Jr. was really rocking Lopez. And just a, a few things I noticed, Cambosis Jr. did excellently well in this fight. And I really want to do a breakdown in this fight now because the tactics from Cambosis Jr.'s team was just terrific in this fight so you know Cambosis Jr. would try to circle around to the left of Teofimo Lopez and he would throw that power jab and then that left hook and he would condition Lopez at certain moments in the rounds and then obviously he caught him many times after that with the slap hook cross you know so he would he would then throw the the left hook or the power jab and then immediately throw that overhand right. And because he was conditioning Lopez into just expecting the left hand or the or the power jab or the double left hook, Lopez was and this is I don't know if this is just because of inactivity, you know, was composed you know, he was catching Lopez far too often and uh, and it's really it's a really strange one because I feel obviously Lopez has been working with uh, Rubio, that Cuban coach who's, you know, really focused on defense and Cambosis Jr. really just, you know, picked him apart in my opinion. I think um, Lopez did do well in terms of going to the body of Cambosis Jr. and he did obviously connect with him. He obviously did get some good right hands and left hooks on him. I think that was probably the best part of Lopez's game, was probably just going to the body. I feel Cambosis Jr. really just, like I said, he just kept circling around to the left. And then obviously when there was exchanges up close, Tiafim was a really powerful puncher. You know, he's not got knockout power. He would tend to just try and tie him up as soon as he could. And it worked. And you could tell Lopez was tired. And then obviously as the rounds went on, Lopez then got a little bit more energy again and you could tell Cambosis Jr. just because of the output and the movement he'd been doing in the previous rounds was starting to tire and then obviously that 10th round um, Lopez managed to get him with the right hand and he didn't throw that punch enough in my opinion as well. Could he have maybe taken him out in that 10th? Oh, I don't know. You know, was there enough time in the round? There was like a minute, I think there was like a minute left. 
but yeah it was just i think after that it just i just couldn't see lopez winning i think i had Combosis ahead by at least a round or two rounds throughout the whole fight and i had it kind of 115 113 at the end to Cambosis jr i could even give Cambosis jr another round i think um as much as Cambosis was hitting with those overhand rights i feel the tiafimo was doing well with the jab especially going to the body and just keeping him at bay but like i said and i don't know if it's just inactivity from tiafimo lopez you know it was Cambosis Jr., like I said, you know, he was just circling around to the left, using the jab and left hooks to condition Tiafimo. And then uh, Cambosis Jr. would then, mainly towards the end of the rounds, would then throw the overhand right and completely catch Tiafimo off guard. And you you just got to wonder, you know, does, did he just not have the energy? Or I, I have no idea. I have no idea. I think maybe the corner advice wasn't the best from Tiafimo's side. Like I said, you know, it's it's very different. Like I said at the beginning of this video, it's very different in terms of the cornerman advice. Tio's dad is very much, you know, emotional in terms of his responses. He does give a couple of things to Tiafimo to give him confidence. But then you, you hear uh, Cambosis Jr.'s corner and they're telling him, you know, things, specific things to do. And I always you guys know i love the sweet science i love the more technical side of it yes that mo motivational emotional side is important as well as well at times but i feel in the long run that would probably help cambosis jr just keep to the game plan whereas tiafimo's dad was saying like you gotta get this guy out of here <laughs> you know it's like of course that is obviously the plan but you need to tell him the thing to do that and he kept saying you know use the jab to get in up, in up close and as much as you know the jab was working for Tiafimo it wasn't at the same time because Tiafimo was using the body jab really well and then when he was coming up close in the exchange Cambosis Jr for me for the most part was winning those exchanges with the left hook with the catch left hook or the or, or obviously that overhand right or the the power jab as well and you know, absolute credit to Cambosis Jr. We have a new unified or undisputed world champion, whatever way you look at it, he's definitely won a fan in me. Um and totally deserved the victory. It's disappointing to hear Tio after that fight say there is no way Cambosis Jr. I'm sure once he watches it back he'll realise that, you know, it was a lot closer than he thought it was and you know he's a champion he's a young kid i think the whole thing probably didn't help him this year with the inactivity he's still so young yeah yes he beat lomachenko but at the end of the day cambosis jr i think was just the overall better fighter in this fight and was better in the exchanges looked like he hurt tiafimo lopez far more often than the other way around I think the tactics from that team, tremendous. They just were so good at conditioning Lopez into certain punches. Like I said, he was just great at circling around, conditioning Lopez, and then following up with a right hand, with a left hook right hand. And then there was one, and there's also another point in the fight where he, where Cambosis Jr. mixed it up and even threw an uppercut instead of just the overhand right, and it completely caught Lopez off guard. And... If I'm being honest, there was times I felt Tiafimo, he just didn't know what to do. He looked out his depth. And like I said, is it the corner? Probably there is an element of that. I think they totally overlooked Cambosis Jr. And that's their own faults. They've got no one to blame but themselves for that. And Cambosis Jr., credit to you, totally deserved that victory. And I'm excited to see what happens for both guys now. I think Tio just needs to forget about this. Forget about the rematch, move up to 140 and fight whoever there now. And I would love to see Cambosa Jr. fight Devin Haney. For me, after that display, Cambosa Jr. definitely beats Devin Haney. However, I think it will be a bit more of a boxing fight and a trickier fight for Cambosa Jr. Final thoughts. Uh, I, I remember I saw Josh from the Good Boxing Podcast say on his channel, and his I can't remember where I saw it, but he basically said, I don't know how whoever loses this fight is going to recover 
And yeah, at the moment, it's difficult for me to see how Lopez bounces back from this. He can't stay at 135, that's clear. You could tell in that fight he was he was just too slow, he wasn't reactive enough. Yes, at times in that fight he looked powerful, but he needs to move up in weight. He can't, he's too big for this weight now. But mentally, how is this going to affect him now? And I think guys are going to look at Teofimo Lopez and they're going to think they're going to take him. And Cambosis Jr. has now left the mark on how to beat him. But yeah, guys, I'd love to know in the comments below what you guys think. Definitely a fight of the year contender for me up there with Wilder Tyson Fury now. But I'd love to hear what you guys' thoughts were. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.